Okay, more review of functions. This one. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, there we are. Um, okay, so here we are. Functions, basic stuff here. Slope, linear equations, domain is going to get a little bit trickier. But, uh, well, I'm going to blitz slope in about one minute. You know what slope is? It's rise over run. It's also change in y over change in x. Um, I absolutely love this notation right here. And you will see why in about a month, if maybe not even that long. But the delta y over delta x, change y over change in x. And you know how to find the slope, so we're not going to harp on that much longer. <clears throat> A linear equations. Now, for whatever reason, I have discovered that every math teacher in the world is absolutely enamored and absolutely loves slope-intercept form. Uh, it is taught in classes as the way to write linear equations, and I have no clue why. But since that's what you're comfortable with, we're going to do slope-intercept form first. And I've made this one a little bit easy. I went ahead and gave you the slope, so you don't have to find it. But the problem is I did not give you the y-intercept. I gave you a point floating out in the first quadrant. So if I were to go through with slope-intercept form, you do the y equals mx plus b, and we start plugging in what we know. We know that we have a y-coordinate of 7 is equal to, I know the slope is 1 half, x is 4 plus b, half of 4 is 2, so 7 equals 2 plus b, and you find out that b is equal to 5. <coughs> And then once you finally get B, you take your B and you take your slope and you roll them both into slope-intercept form. Y is equal to 1 half X plus 5. And there is your plus B. Okay. 5. Aha. Okay. And there is your equation in slope-intercept form. I don't know why, but that is why, how teachers teach you to find the equation of a line. They think that that's the best way to do it. Uh, the only time I use slope-intercept form is if I'm given the slope and the y-intercept. Otherwise, I use point-slope form right here, which is a perfectly valid way of writing the equation of a line. It just looks a little bit different. Um, this is your point-slope form where x1, y1 is simply some point. So x1, y1 is a given point. And m is still the slope. So exact same problem we just did. Find the equation of a line with a slope of 1 half that passes through the point. Uh, there's my x1 and my y1. So I'm going to do this really slow so you can see how to use point slope form. It is y minus my y coordinate is equal to 1 half x minus my x coordinate. So I plugged in 1 half for the m. Hey, I'm done. Look at there. There's your answer. Draw a box around it. Move on. You do not have to solve for y. You don't have to put it in slope-intercept form. This is a perfectly legit linear equation. It is accepted by the Math League of America, and it is what we will be using. And we will write a lot of linear equations throughout the year. It is one of the most basic questions of calculus. And so you need to know how to write the equation of a line, and we will stop in point-slope form. Uh, now, here's a, one's a little bit more difficult because I didn't give you the slope. I gave you two points, which satisfies half of point-slope form. So now I just need to find slope, but we know that slope is change in y over change in x. So I will simply do that. 8 minus 3 is 5 over negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. So there's my slope. And now that I have slope, I know my point-slope form is going to be, let's go with blue, y minus and pick one point or the other. It doesn't matter. Uh, I'll choose the first one. So I'll do y minus 3 is equal to, my slope was negative 5 thirds, x minus 1. And there's your answer. Stop. You do not have to go any further. Now there is a second answer here because if you chose to use the second ordered pair, you would have gotten the answer. y minus 8 is equal to my slope, which is negative 5 thirds x minus a negative 2, which is x plus 2. So there are actually two answers, and they are the same line. If you were to go crazy and solve this thing for y and put it in slope-intercept form, you would get the exact same answer. But we're not going to do that. We're not going to burden ourselves with mindless arithmetic. This is a calculus class. I don't care if you can show me how to distribute and solve for y. So this is where we will stop, point-slope form. All you need is a point and a slope, hence the name point-slope. Brilliant. Moving on. Uh, stuff that's a little bit more difficult is domain, and this is something you're always going to have to be aware of. I probably will not, with the exception of this first test, um, once we get into calculus, I will not ask you simply to tell me the domain, but you do need to be aware of what the domain is because sometimes answers that you get to other questions 
depend on the domain. So finding domain, it's all the x's for which the function is de uh, defined. I like to think of it as how can I screw up this function. So I have a pretty simple one. This is a polynomial x cubed plus 5x. If I were to find, the, if I were to find the domain, I basically just want to screw this equation up. What can I plug into this equation that will make it blow up? Give me an imaginary answer, make the function undefined. Uh, and in this case, there is nothing that can plug it uh, plug it up. There's nothing that can screw this equation up. So my domain is all real numbers. I can plug in positive numbers. I can plug in negative numbers. I can plug in zeros. I can plug in square roots. I can do whatever I want. In interval notation, that would be from negative infinity to positive. Whoa, that's a crap infinity. There, yeah, that's better. All right, so there's your domain for that one. Pretty simple. Polynomials cannot be screwed up with real numbers. So there we go. Um, other equations, making it a little bit more difficult. Uh, number two up here. X plus 1 over X squared minus 9. How much time have we done? Ah, six minutes. Um, so X plus 1 over X squared minus 9. What can screw that up? Anybody? Anybody? All right. Yeah, that's right. I hear it out there. Um, we have a fraction. You cannot divide by 0. I think we talked about this in class today. Um, you cannot divide by 0. And if you do divide by 0, it makes your function undefined. So I'm trying to screw up this equation, and I'm going to screw it up by setting the equation equal to 0 and solving it. Now, I am a fan of factoring whenever possible. I don't know why I keep changing colors. Um, so I will factor this. That's the difference of squares. x plus 3, x minus 3. Set that equal to 0. And I get x cannot be negative 3 or positive 3. Um, so that's what x cannot be. But remember, domain is actually the values of x for which the function is defined. It, the domain is not what x cannot be. So while this is a description of what x can't be, my domain is actually everything except those two. And if I were to write that in interval notation, that's everything before negative 3, everything from negative 3 to positive 3, and then everything after 3. So my domain is this stuff in interval notation. x is not equal to 3 or negative 3 is a descriptor, but it's not the actual domain. Are we good? Are we good? Maybe I'm being picky. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Square roots. What can screw up a negative? That's right. Neg uh, did I just say what can screw up a negative? Ah, I'm so messing this up. All right. What can screw up a square root? And that's a negative. Sorry, I gave that one to you. You got lucky. Um, so let's see. So inside a radical, you cannot take the square root of a negative. So I do not want this to be negative, which means the only way this function works is if the stuff under the square root is positive. So I'm going to set it greater than 0. Um, can you take the square root of 0? Can you do that? Let's go into thinking land. Can you do the square root of 0? Is the square root of 0 OK? Yeah, that's equal to 0. We can do that. So I will also say equals 0. 3x minus 8 is greater than or equal to 0. And we solve that equation. Move the 8 over, divide by 3. x is greater than or equal to 8 thirds. And that is the domain. In interval notation, bracket, 8 thirds to infinity, and you never equal infinity, so there's your domain for number 3. Yeah, 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 so fractions, bottom cannot be 0, radicals, the inside must be greater than or equal to 0, and I have one more, and then we'll call it a day, uh, logarithmic functions, which people see this, and I think I just heard a bunch of groans the second y'all saw this. Uh, if you have a log function, whether it's ln, log base 3, any natural log, uh, the rule is pretty much the same as square roots. You cannot have negatives, but with logs, you cannot have 0 either. The ln of 0 or the log of 0 is undefined as well. So for a log, you need the inside to be greater than 0, just not equal to. So x plus 8 is greater than 0. Solve that for x. X is greater than, whoops, no. yeah, there we go. X is greater than negative 8. And in interval notation, that starts at negative 8. I keep wanting to write infinity. And it ends at infinity. We are not equal to negative 8, and we're not equal to infinity. So there is the domain for a log function. So there we go. Um, logs, just know the inside must be positive. Radicals, the inside can be positive or 0. Fractions, you cannot divide by zero. So basically, you're thinking, what can screw up this equation? And that's kind of how you tackle domain problems. We'll work on it in class tomorrow. Any questions, post them. And I will see you in class.